This episode is sponsored by Audible. Welcome to the science. Have you seen this experiment before? With the milk and the food coloring? And then you put some dish soap on the end of a Q-tip and you dip it in the middle of the liquid to get this awesome experiment. This is the kind of experiment that never gets old. But if you're like me and you fidget a lot and you keep playing with it, you'll notice that if you flick the Q-tip across the surface of the water, you get these little beads that roll across. They're like little bowling balls that roll across. Oh my God, that's so pretty. I have to take a picture. Bow. Thanks to some phantom high-speed footage from Beyond Slow Motion, awesome channel, definitely check it out. Link is in the description. You can see that these beads form as streams of milk break up into individual droplets and then bounce on the surface. It's so mesmerizing. But what are they? I drove myself crazy Googling every different combination of soap and milk and food coloring and liquid and I could not figure out what they are. So I did what I always do when I need to know something. And I asked my physics friend, Dan Walsh, who immediately said, Anti-bubbles. <laughs> I thought he was joking. You think I'm joking? Turns out he was close. Anti-bubbles are even cooler than this. Dan. Are you ready for this? I'm, I was born ready. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, yeah! Dear. That's amazing! I am here with Ashley, who's my intern, and Dan, who's my friend and is just really enthusiastic about physics. Also a PhD student in physics. That's another reason why I'm so interested. Yeah. <laughs> also a student of physics. Ooh. So much physics here. <laughs> so anti-bubble is the exotic sounding name given to these little spheres that we've made underwater because they're kind of like the opposite of a regular bubble. A regular bubble is a thin film of a liquid enclosing a gas and then typically floating in a gas like air, whereas an anti-bubble is a thin film of gas enclosing a sphere of liquid and then typically fully submerged in a liquid. Do you wanna try this one? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, you just try a bunch like of different ideal. parameters. To so you've gotta put water in both of these containers, then add soap, mix it all in, and then you squeeze water from this container onto the surface of this one. Like oh, pulses. that was a good one. Oh, you're getting some good ones. Those are awesome. The water drags some air along with it, which closes off into a shell. It, it takes some, some time to get used to it. It is like a sweet spot you angle. You have to find a sweet spot. But it's easy to see the structure of the anti-bubbles when we added food coloring into the squeeze bottle, because then when they pop, you can see that colored liquid come out, typically making the shape of a vortex ring. Oh, that's so Oh! Uh, did you see how there was a little regular bubble that came up? By using high-speed cameras, physicists have observed that the air at the bottom of the anti-bubble floats to the top, popping the air film. You've now got a little air droplet that floats to the surface, which is just the opposite of a popped bubble where the liquid film falls because of gravity. Thank you guys. Sure, thank Have you. <laughs> <laughs> so despite sounding like some exotic form of matter, anti-bubbles are actually just as common as regular bubbles. You make them when you wash your hands with soapy water, but they pop much more easily than regular bubbles. Why? Wait, so why do regular bubbles pop? So you form a regular bubble by decreasing the surface tension of water. And when you decrease the surface tension, bubbles can live a lot longer. There's actually a really interesting molecular reason why bubbles keep their nice spherical shape. It works like this. Each soap molecule has a hydrophilic, that is a water attracting head, and a hydrophobic or a water repelling tail. When you make a soap bubble, the soap molecules line up so that hydrophobic heads are in contact with the water. They have a slight electric charge, which means that the soap molecules on one surface of the film repel the soap molecules on the other surface, which helps keep the film from collapsing in on itself. That is, until the film evaporates. Now, an anti-bubble, on the other hand, is also made of soapy water, but there are a few key differences. Everything's all flipped around. So the anti-bubble air film, the hydrophobic tails are now facing each other in the film, and the hydrophilic heads are facing away in the liquid. Soapy water is actually a good electrical conductor, which means that electric charges can flow easily through it. So those slightly charged hydrophilic heads attract oppositely charged molecules in the water, basically neutralizing the charge at the surface of the anti-bubble air film. Those electric repulsive forces that basically help the bubble keep its shape don't exist in anti-bubbles. And so they pop much more easily than their regular bubble cousin. No! 
So as you can see, they're kind of hard to make. Like we struggled with a lot of the steps. Don't put too much food coloring. Yeah. I would suggest practicing without food coloring first yeah. because otherwise you're gonna make all the fluid red. Yeah. The other trick is that if you add some corn syrup into this bottle, you'll increase the density of this liquid because corn syrup is more dense than water so that you can get your anti-bubbles to sink. Or even get a little bit of the corn syrup in here mixed in the bottom so that you've got a gradient of density from more dense to less dense. Then when you squeeze this liquid into the cup, you could get them to float right in the middle, kind of like a neutral buoyancy in that level of the liquid density. It takes a lot of patience. <laughs> They're so cool! Ah, I love science. So if you were to make an anti-bubble in space where there's no buoyant forces caused by gravity, you could make the anti-bubble last a lot longer. Destin over at Smarter Every Day is making a video with more about this. So as soon as that's up, I'll put the link in the description. Even after all this explanation, there's still a lot we don't really understand about anti-bubbles. So stay tuned for the research on this and potential applications. But in the meantime, I did find out you can make anti-bubbles in beer. So cheers to anti-suds. Happy physics sudsing. This episode of Physics Girl is supported by Audible.com. Right now, Audible is offering viewers a 30-day membership trial. Check out audible.com slash physicsgirl to access their audio programs and titles. Reading is good for you. I'm currently reading The Big Picture by Sean Carroll. So go to audible.com slash physicsgirl and make sure to use that link to help us out and get a membership trial.